And then you jammed. No, I survived. What? Again? I remember almost throwing up with one of my meals because it just, the text, it was everything just that I put in my mouth was just texture. It wasn't flavor. It wasn't, you know, any kind of smell or, you know, aroma. I was just walking around the house saying, Lord, because I just couldn't believe it. welcome back to my channel and also welcome if you are new i'm so grateful to have you all here so my name is aquia b and here on this channel i cover all things faith culture and encouragement and as you can tell from the title of today's video which is very very random i'm going to be sharing with you my experience with covid as well as my experience at forum 2021 so most of you probably don't know what uh, forum 2021 was so i'm going to be sharing a bit about what that was it's very exciting and i do hope that you stick around till the end of the video to be able to find out a bit more about what that is and what I got up to there. But before we get into all of that, I just want to quickly encourage you, as per usual, to leave a like down below on today's video and also comment something that you've taken from it or just something that you've enjoyed in general. And if you haven't already, then please, please, please make sure that you have subscribed to my channel and also turn that notification bell on so that you never miss a new upload. Also, a quick plug to my Instagram at EsterABF or a queer B, and that is just another space where I share more faith, culture and encouragement on a more daily basis. Also, quick disclaimer before I get into the video, if you hear that slight clicking sound, it's just my camera refocusing. Um, I've just put it on this to get the best quality, so I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much. If it does, then please let me know and I'll just turn it to the manual setting that it was on before. Um, but I am focusing on getting a new lens, so um, yeah, let's get into the verse for the video. Okay, so today's verse of the video comes from John chapter 3, and today we're going to be focusing into verse 30. It's a super short verse, so I'm just going to quickly read it for us, and then we'll get into some deductions. So it says, he must increase, but I must decrease. So this has just been like a companion of mine. This verse has just been really a companion of mine for the past few weeks. Um, with all that's been happening, all that I've been through and just really um, holding on to God, knowing that he must increase, but I must decrease. Um, and just really being in that state of um, vulnerability and surrender to be able to step down from any position of pride or, you know, any inflated ego or character of my importance because even though I'm a treasured possession of his, he is the, um, he's the, the main, you know, the main event. He is the one that, um, our lives center around. So really just having that perspective of, you know, my relationship to him and my relation, me and myself as, you know, a human in relation to him, um, it's just been quite interesting to be able to think about that and really put that in perspective and um, just bring myself back to a place of humility and submission to him again. Um, so that is why I've just focused on this verse um, recently. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of the main essence of it, of this verse. It's saying he must increase, um, I must decrease. And I think that um, that language, that must, and you know, as if it's some kind of urgency and it's, it's of the most importance is just really um you know teaching us how we should go about our relationship with god how we should go about um you know our perspective in relation to him because this isn't an optional thing this isn't a um you know a conditional thing it's a this has to happen um you know so it's quite interesting to see the way that it's using that language and um yeah, I just thought this verse was really great to talk about and I just thought it was one to definitely bring up to you guys and I really hope that you guys have more deductions um, and takeaways in the comments. Um, but yeah, that is the way that it must be, our relationship with God. He must be increasing. We must be becoming more like Christ every day. We must be doing that. We must be decreasing because if we're not doing that, you know, what is the opposite of that? It's disobedience. It's, um, you know, rebelliousness. It's sin. You know, so we must be increasing the Lord in our lives and decreasing ourselves, our, decreasing our human nature and our flesh um, and increasing our Christ-like spirit. So now let's get into the main portion of today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed the verse of the video and let's get straight into it. 
Okay, so now we're gonna just quickly talk for a few minutes about how long I've been gone, why I've been gone, all of these different things. And as you've guessed from the title, I did have COVID, unfortunately. Um, so I just wanna share a bit about um, my past few weeks and you know what I've been through and all of that. Um, so I did have COVID, unfortunately. Um, and I think I got it around the same time that I did go to forum. So this is why I was meant to have a forum vlog come out literally like, I was planning on weekend of or, you know, few days after I left forum to have this vlog out and have more content up on my channel and I was on a roll and I was like I'm gonna be more consistent and do all these different things and unfortunately that just didn't happen um you know God allowed me to contract Covid and not sure where I got it from um or all of that um detail of it but um thankfully I wasn't hit too hard with it um, I started to fall ill maybe around the 25th so I started to feel like really tired and then um, I, th I thought that I had a sore throat developing I thought just because I was camping and I've, I've never camped before I went to forum um, so I thought that maybe it's just the cold and you know I wasn't layering up properly or something like that um, but that wasn't the case so I was actually coming down with Covid so forum lasted about five days we did all have to test negative before we went so it wasn't just a spur of the moment everybody you know a large massive crowd comes and has this event and goes home we all did have to be tested um when we arrived um we didn't do testing when we left but we did do testing when we arrived and everybody that was present was negative at that time so i must have developed it um later on so i started to feel that like i said around the 25th and then wait, maybe 26, yeah, maybe 26, 25th, 26, I started to feel tired and, you know, a sore throat coming on and all of this stuff. So then it got to the weekend, we actually left for, um, and then um, I think it was the Saturday that I woke up and I just felt like hit with the flu kind of, like, or a cold, I think it was more cold because a fever I see that is a bit more extreme. I've had fever before and I know, you know, it's just, it completely drains you. You have a high temperature, you have chills. And when I get those things, I can really distinctly tell those symptoms from any other. Um, I didn't have those things. I didn't have a high temperature. I didn't have chills and, you know, that kind of fever. So I thought I just had a cold developing because I was, you know, sleeping outside and all of these different things. Um, so I started to feel that all of that hit me at once. I started to feel um, sore throatiness. I started to feel just like quite mucusy, and then um, my nose was blocked. So I just thought I was having a cold. I thought I was developing a cold. Um, so in the morning, I was meant to have work that morning. Um, on the Saturday. So I woke up, um, got ready, all these different things. And I, cause I took a test uh, for COVID a while ago um, and I got some free packs, free packets, free testing packs from my university. So I had some in my drawer tucked away and I was like, wait, before I go back to work, I should probably check if I have COVID. Like just as a precaution, I know I tested negative earlier in the week before I went to forum, but I was like, let me just, um, you know, double check and, you know, see, cause I am feeling a bit ill. Maybe it's, you know, a cold, maybe it's not. So I did a double check and um, turned out I had COVID apparently. So I had really thin lines and I've seen so many like pregnancy reveals and things like that. Um, this is a bit of a tangent, but I've seen so many pregnancy reveals on YouTube and um, cause I just love family content. I love, you know, people, you know, being excited and anticipating a child and all of this different stuff. So I've seen when people are like, oh wait, it's a faint line, you know, we need to do further checks. So I was like, but it's a faint line. Like it was super faint. I had to squint to see it. <clears throat> So um, I was just thinking to myself, let me do another test. So I think I did a total of two or three tests that morning and then I called my work because I was like, I don't want to come in and endanger people. So I'm just gonna go get a PCR test um, just to double check. The PCR test is more sensitive. So I decided to go do that. Um, so instead of going to work that morning, I could still do like an afternoon shift. So I was like, I'll go if it's negative, obviously um, I'll come in, but if it's not, you know, I have to stay off um, and obviously PCR tests you have to wait so I had to even wait to get that result so I definitely couldn't go to work that day um, so I went in got my test um, and then finished my testing 
handed it in, all of that stuff left. And I think I was just staying at home because obviously whilst you're getting tested for COVID, they don't want you to just go out and accidentally spread it to people. So I was staying at home um, and I think it was maybe like a day and a bit. So it was like almost two days. I got a message like later Sunday night and if I'd went in the morning on Saturday, so it was basically nearly two days. Uh, I went, I got a text on Sunday evening saying that I was positive and I was like, oh my goodness, Lord, please. Like, no, like this is just the worst thing. And I love to work. So like, I was just like, oh, I'm like getting cut out of work and I'm gonna have to isolate and all of these different things. And bearing, it, bearing in mind at this point, I wasn't feeling it too bad. I thought I literally just had a cold. Um, so I really kicked into high gear, like downtime. I was like, I need to get back to my normal health. Like there is no way I'm going to, you know, take this for granted. I'm gonna really um, bear down and just, you know, wrestle through this, rest through it and just, you know, let my body do what it needs to do to be able to recover. But the first thing that I did, as soon as I got my positive result in the message, I messaged my mum and I was like, mummy, I got COVID. And then I messaged my sister, I think as well. And I was just like, I've got COVID. Um, I didn't tell like friends because I just, I didn't want to bother people. And I also didn't want to, I, the people that I went to forum with, um, I obviously told because they might be at risk of contracting it. Um, but I didn't go around like sharing my news of uh, positive result because I just didn't want too much commotion around it. I just wanted to knuckle down, get through it, get over it. And I knew that God would, you know, God is faithful. He's going to get me through it. I'm not going to, you know, he's got plans for my life and all of that stuff. Um, so I really didn't take it for granted. I was in bed, in my room, not trying to touch things around the house too much. Um, I literally lived off of green tea um, with different herbs and spices and all of this different stuff added into it, you know, just to try and clear my airways a bit more and, you know, provide that constant uh, fluid to, my, to myself. Cause I had that on water like the first five days, like all the time, cause I could barely eat, my appetite had gone. So I didn't have the usual symptoms like the cough and um, the high temperature. Um, and the fever, I think that was one of the common ones as well. So I had like an intensified cold kind of, like that's how I would describe it. Um, so after probably the fifth day, I was like, oh, hallelujah, I'm feeling like so much better and I can probably do things around the house that I couldn't do before. Um, so I was getting back slowly to doing more normal house activities. Um, like just, you know, making my bed in the morning and instead of like staying in and just being like, uh, like woe is me, um, I could, you know, do other things. So the only thing I was like, oh, it's so frustrating that I can't do is film because my camera is right here. I could film, pick it up, film anytime I want to, but because I was feeling so ill and then I was obviously like probably not looking my best, <laughs> then I was just like, let me just be a hermit for a while and I'll come back when I'm feeling 100% and actually give people some watchable content um, because there wasn't, nothing, there wasn't much to, that I could bring to the camera with energy wise, like I was just depleted. Um, so I was in bed for most of the time and then once it got to like day five-ish, day six of my isolation, then um, I started to lose my smell and taste and I was like, goodness me, like, what is this? I think it's definitely one of those things you don't take it for granted, you don't learn to appreciate it until it's gone. It's one of those things like you don't miss it till it's gone. Um, and you will take it for granted until it's gone. So I think I was, I can't remember what I was doing. I think I was making another cup of tea and I just couldn't smell the, the herbs and spices and things I was adding into my green tea. I think it was like nutmeg or cinnamon or something. And I was just trying, oh, that is my phone. I was trying to smell it and I just couldn't, there was nothing to smell. And I was just thinking like, is it not close enough? So I was like doing it a bit closer to my nose to smell it and it just nothing. Um, <clears throat> And that was just so shocking for me. I just couldn't believe it. Um, I'd obviously heard about people losing their taste and their smell, but I just thought um, it's just such a wild alien thing. Like it's just never happened with a sickness that I've experienced before. Um, I was talking to my sister and she was like, oh, sometimes, you know, when your nose gets a bit blocked, you can't smell things when you have a cold. And I was like, yes, but my nose, even when it's clear, it's just nothing, like not even a scent. Um, so, 
that's when we all started to be a bit like yikes this isn't this isn't looking too good um and then we did research and my sister was saying oh it's gonna take six months for it to come back and i was like no like lord please i can't do this for six whole months like um so day six or seven like i said day five or six even i was losing my taste and smell um i could still smell nutmeg was one of the ones i could smell i think it was cinnamon that i didn't get a smell from and then also i could smell coffee so i just thought oh well it's maybe just gonna be slightly affected i'm not gonna lose it um and i think the next day that's when i just completely lost it and i was like oh okay there it is <laughs> i'm not special um so then um after that um symptom wise then i started to just uh to, like get much better on the whole, apart from my smell and taste. Um, so food just wasn't enjoyable at all. I could not like process a whole meal. I think I remember almost throwing up with one of my meals because it just, the text, it was everything just that I put in my mouth was just texture. It wasn't flavor. It wasn't, you know, any kind of smell or, you know, aroma. When you eat, it's a whole experience, even when you cook at home. So I just couldn't experience anything to the full and that really affected me, my appetite. So I was just, I just, food was just like, ugh, I can't. Um, so then it got to, I think maybe day nine. So just before I was about to leave um, isolation. So I think I had a few days left. And all of a sudden, I think, what was the first thing I smelled? I think I had chips <laughs> and it was like um, some takeout chips. It was, uh, I literally never get this before. It's the first time I've got it, but um, it was a fish and chip from a fish and chip shop that do like proper chips. And these are like, um, not crisps for my American viewers. It's like, um, like fries, but like thick ones. So we call them chips. Um, and they, they put, well, I put salt and vinegar on them. I added that because I ordered them plain and I put salt and vinegar when I uh, received them and I could just smell so intensely the vinegar and I just, because I, I was, you know, going absentmindedly about my day and my life and all of this stuff and as I was adding them, them in, I sharply just felt something in my nose and I was like, oh, like, what is that? It was so offensive and direct and I remember um, just pulling away and just being like, what is that? And... I remember touching my nose and being like, did I just smell vinegar? Like, did I just smell vinegar? When I tell you I almost cried, I'm going to cry now, like honestly. <clears throat> and this was only like a matter of like literally three days that I properly lost my taste and smell. I, oh, I can't even describe it. I almost cried. And I was just saying, Lord, Lord. I was just walking around the house saying, Lord, because I just couldn't believe it. I was so you know in shock and um i think i tried to call my sister but she didn't pick up because the wi-fi was like dodgy and it was whatsapp um so yeah i just had to wait like a whole six hours until the evening and she got her wi-fi back and i was like i can smell things again like slightly i'm coming to you know my senses are coming back a bit and she was just like oh that's like you know she didn't she couldn't relate fully obviously to how i was feeling but um yeah, she was just excited and my mum was happy and all of this stuff. So it was just really nice to um, have that come back so soon because it felt like um, forever, even though it was only a few days because some people do live with this and are still living with this, even from the first wave of COVID back in 2020. So I do feel really fortunate and blessed to be able to have gotten that back so quick. And now it's even not 100%. I can smell things initially, but to fully you know you know be uh immersed in a scent for a while is a struggle i have to concentrate so um it's only slightly coming back with like initial smells initial initially walking into a room initially you know catching a scent of something so we'll just see what god does and hopefully you know i'm just saying in prayer that he 100 percent restores my smell and taste because you know, that is something that we do take for granted and it's such a big part of eating and cooking and, you know, life. So yeah, um, really praying for that. And I just pray that you guys pray for me as well. Uh, pray for full, re full recovery because, you know, there's some things that um, you really take for granted until you, like, uh, until you lose them. Okay, so I just wanna quickly talk about, um, a bit about my outlook and how I was really feeling during this time. 
um, before I talk about and go into forum and all of that second part of the video. Um, so just to quickly wrap this up, so forum was so amazing and I'm going to talk about that later in today's video. Um, but obviously getting back, getting that positive result and it just really felt like um, a stopper in my life and you know I've seen illness my whole life, I've seen people be bed bound, be um, you know not be able to go outside for long portions of time like months even so just getting a taste of that it was really quite um, obviously it wasn't to the extent that uh, the people that I've witnessed go through what they went through but just to have a taste of it oh it was just awful and I really have you know so much more um, compassion for people that are ill people that are you know ill for a long time and especially children and older people, uh, more vulnerable people. So um, yeah, I think the whole experience, it just, it, to be fair with me specifically, because I think I am such an optimist <laughs> that it really just helped me to, you know, get close with God in that time, but also just trust in him, just rest, because there was kind of an underlying peace that I had with it um, that was just kind of like, God's got me and I don't have to stress. I was not stressed. Um, I was just trusting in God and just, you know, chilling. I was, you know, smooth sailing because I knew that God, God has me, God, God had me. Um, so yeah, um, that was kind of my experience with my feelings going through COVID and, you know, bed rest and all of this stuff. Um, but yeah, now I'm on the opposite side of it. I'm just, you know, trying to live life to the full, taking opportunities, doing what I can outside of the house because, you know, there's only so much you can bear being it indoors, especially when you're an, more of an outdoorsy person. I love going on walks. Um, I think the first day after isolation, I did like uh, 24K steps. So I did like t uh, 20,000... 24,000 steps, yeah. So usually my uh, goal for the day is 10K, 10,000 steps. Um, but the day after isolation, I did 24,000 steps because I was just like, I need to get out of this house. So I did way more. I did double and a half of what I would usually do or try to make in a day. Um, so yeah, just really appreciating and having an attitude of humility and gratefulness and thankfulness is so important. And um, yeah, just don't take life for granted. Don't take your health for granted. It's definitely one of the things I will never take for granted. Um, but yeah, that has been my experience of COVID. And um, hopefully you guys have learned something from it, feel inspired from it, or just, you know, um, have any of your uh, stories or you know experiences in the comments down below um, I'd love to hear them I'd love to encourage you if you're currently going through a positive result and isolation and all of these things or even just lockdown um, I'm in a country where lockdown isn't really a thing anymore um, restrictions are very relaxed and um, you know people have a lot more freedoms so I just pray for all the other areas around the world that are still affected that are still heavily steeped in lockdown um, and I just pray that you join me, join with me in prayer for those areas and those places um, that are going through these things. And I think that this time has just really taught me to even look more outside of myself, more than myself. That's why I think John 3.30 was such a great verse for the video, for today's video. Because um, it's just really one of those experiences, especially when you're ill with something like this. Um, in my case, it taught me to look outside of myself more than inward, inwardly. Um, so, yeah, just having that perspective of, you know, he must increase and I must decrease. Um, yeah, so that was my experience of COVID. Um, now I'm going to get into the second part of the video, which is talking about my forum experience. And if you have any more questions, then please make sure to leave them down below about my COVID experience. Um, or just any, you know, anything that you're curious about and I'm more than happy to answer them in the comments down below or maybe a separate video if there is a lot of questions. Um, and yeah, let's get straight into that.